Hello and welcome to this autistic sales video which will explain who we are and why we started our channel. Our channel is a space for us to talk about what life is like as an autistic person who also has dissociative identity disorder or DID. We're trying to grow our channel so we'd really like it if you could subscribe by clicking the button below. If you turn on notifications then you will get to know when we publish new videos. There are two versions of our video. This is the sensory friendly version. We also have a version which contains music and sound effects. We will start by defining what autism means to us. We define autism as a social and communication difference and a difference in processing. We see the world differently. We find change difficult. Even small changes really upset us. We have sensory sensitivities. We find we get very passionate and intense about something to the extent that we are unable to do anything else. When were we diagnosed as autistic? We didn't know we were autistic when we were growing up. This meant we couldn't be supported and we didn't understand why we didn't fit in, why we couldn't make friends and why we felt so different to everyone else. After our children were diagnosed as being autistic, we attended courses on autism and started to see ourselves in the descriptions, especially when they were talking about autism in women and girls. We realised that we too were autistic and we went on to be formally diagnosed in the summer of 2018 when we were 42 years old. What is Dissociative Identity Disorder? Dissociative Identity Disorder, or DID, used to be called Multiple Personality Disorder. DID is diagnosed using the criteria in the DSM-5. This is the official manual used for classifying and diagnosing mental disorders and is published by the American Psychiatric Association. DID can be diagnosed when a person meets all five of the criteria listed in the DSM-5. We were first diagnosed with DID in 2004, when we were in our late 20s. We are going to quote the five criteria directly from the DSM-5 and then discuss examples from our assessment report to show why we were diagnosed with DID. The first criteria for DID is that there should be two or more distinct identities or personality states present, each with their own relatively enduring pattern of perceiving, relating to and thinking about the environment and self. We feel we are made up of several different identities or parts, with each one taken over at different times. We also experience identity confusion. We are often confused about who we are and are aware of other identities within us, but don't always know exactly who they are. The second criteria in the DSM-5 is that amnesia must occur. This is defined as gaps in the recall of everyday events, important personal information and or traumatic events. An example from our report of us having amnesia was us not remembering we are cooking and forgetting to turn the oven off. This would usually be because we had switched into a different persona and the new persona had no memory of what we were doing. Nowadays, we do still experience amnesia and we still have memories held by one part which the rest of us can't access but we are better at controlling who fronts and when. We work more as a team and there is much more communication between the different alters. The third criteria listed in the DSM-5 is that the person must be distressed by the disorder or have trouble functioning in one or more major life areas because of the disorder. Although we celebrate having alters, embracing them and seeing them as enhancing, not spoiling our lives, it is also true that having DID can also be distressing and difficult for us. We often get confused and are not currently employed because of our difficulties. The final criteria in the DSM are that the disturbance is not part of normal cultural or religious practices and that the symptoms are not due to the direct physiological effects of a substance, for example, alcohol or a general medical condition. To summarise, we were formally diagnosed with DID in 2004 because we met all the criteria in the DSM-5, namely that we were found to have two or more enduring personalities in the presence of amnesia and that our condition caused us distress was not due to our culture and occurred outside the use of alcohol. We also experience other types of dissociation, namely depersonalization and derealization. 
An example of depersonalization from our original assessment report was that we would often feel like we were watching ourselves from a point outside of our body and would feel floaty. This is still true for us today and often happens when we are feeling stressed or anxious in a situation. We will literally leave the situation in our mind and it enables us to cope in situations that we can't avoid but also can't cope with. An example of derealization in us that we still experience today is when the world doesn't feel real. We can feel like the floor is rocking, as if we are on a boat. What language do we prefer to use to describe autism and DID? Although we do meet the criteria listed in DSM-5 for a formal diagnosis of both autism and DID, we prefer to use positive, less medical language when describing ourselves and our reality. We prefer to describe ourselves as being an autistic system, which we feel is less pathologising. We also prefer to describe ourselves as having autistic DID because we feel our DID is different to typical DID because we are also autistic. We talk more about this in our video on autistic trauma and DID. How did we get our original diagnosis of DID? Our psychiatrist applied to our local NHS to ask them to fund a specialist assessment for suspected DID. It was a worrying time involving a lot of waiting and not knowing if they would fund our assessment. But luckily, they did agree and we were assessed by a centre that specialises in dissociative disorders. What happened after we received our diagnosis of DID? Our psychiatrist asked our local NHS to fund the treatment recommended in our report. The NHS agreed to fund DID training and supervision for our therapist, as well as funding twice weekly therapy sessions for a period of three years. We worked hard in our therapy, seeing it as an opportunity to get well and go on to live a normal life. We would no longer describe people as being normal or not normal, but in those days this was quite a common term and a common aspiration in the community we lived in. We defined normal as being able to live a life like other people appeared to do. So for the community we lived in, this typically meant getting married and starting a family. We believed that if Naomi was one person, she would then become normal and we would be able to live the normal life we aspired to. This was in the days before the internet was widely used and there wasn't the same opportunity to meet diverse people on social media. We genuinely didn't know that there were many different ways to live a life and that being one person wasn't actually essential. Our therapist encouraged us in our desire to become a wife and mother and our decision to integrate our alters was mainly due to our belief that we wouldn't be able to parent effectively if we were living as a system of alters. We now know that this belief was wrong. All our alters are back with extras and if anything this enhances rather than detracts from our parenting abilities. Nevertheless, this was our goal and we achieved it. One by one, we merged our alters together until eventually, in December 2006, we were left with just one person, Naomi. Naomi went on to have the family we had all dreamed of. After her children were diagnosed as being autistic, she too was diagnosed as being autistic. Shortly after this, alters began to re-emerge. At first, Naomi was terrified. She wasn't sure if she had DID, autism, or both autism and DID. In 2020, the NHS arranged for us to be reassessed, and it was concluded that we have both autism and DID. Some people might think that we wouldn't be able to live a full and meaningful life because we are autistic and have DID. So, what is our life like? We have been married for 15 years and we have two children, both are autistic. We also have two cats. We don't work because of the challenges that come with being both autistic and DID, but we find making videos brings all of us together and is something we can all cope with. So for us, our Autistic Selves channel is our form of work. Why did we start our Autistic Selves channel? Our inspiration came from feeling misunderstood by the world and wanting the people around us to know about autism and DID. We wanted a space to explore what it means to be both autistic and DID. And our videos are intended for other people who are autistic or DID or both autistic and DID. They're also meant for their families, carers and professionals who work with them. 
We hope our videos will be helpful and of interest to anyone. We find our own children enjoy them and they are a great way for us to explain to our children about the many different altars that share our body. We are sometimes asked if our videos can be used for training purposes. The answer is usually yes. People are welcome to use our resources in their training and we are always so happy and excited to hear that people have found our videos helpful. We just ask that people let us know when they are using our work and also consider making a donation to us via our Ko-fi page so that we can continue making more videos. Our first ever video was actually made for an NHS conference looking at mental health and autism. They wanted us to open the conference by talking about our lived experience. We didn't feel able to speak live and so made a video instead. We found this way of communicating with the world really helpful for us as we can say what we want to say without the anxiety and communication difficulties we encounter when trying to talk to people in person. We have a story to tell and making films works well for us as an alternative way of communicating with people. So what videos have we made so far? So far, we have made videos introducing the altars in our system. We have explored how we experience emotions and we have made a video about parenting and whether it is possible for a person who is both autistic and DID to be a good parent. We have discussed meltdowns, shutdowns and burnout and we have made a video explaining how our system works and the detail of how we are organised inside. Who makes the videos on our channel? Producing our autistic selves content involves all of us but we do also have a creative team of alters that come together to make content. The members of the team are Fiona, Ariella, Julie, Winifred and Naomi. Producing our autistic selves content helps all of us feel regulated, fulfilled and calm. It helps us to get to know each other better and reduces tension and conflict between us. Are we autism or DID professionals? No, we are not autism or DID professionals. We only ever speak from the perspective of our own lived experience, which is unique to us. Although we have a psychology degree and we are also a trained speech and language therapist, our channel is not a professional one. We cannot speak for other autistic people or other people with DID or other people who are both autistic and DID. We are familiar with autism and DID research and current thinking, but our channel is not intended to be academic. We are not able to support or advise others, although we love to hear from people telling us that our videos have helped them or that they relate to what we say but we cannot provide formal advice or support. Is our favourite way of communicating with the world through making videos, or do we also like to communicate in other ways? We really enjoy making videos, but we would also like to communicate using the written word. We write books about our experiences and would love to one day find an agent to represent us and become a published author. So far, we have completed one book, which is called An Interview With Ourselves, Getting To Know The People Inside Me. In the book, we take various topics relevant to autism and consider them from the perspective of the different alters in our system. The book was a way for Naomi to get to know the alters living inside her, and writing it was a useful way for us to open up communication between all of us. We are currently working on an autobiography which is exploring our life, how we got to the point we are at now and what our hopes are for the future. We hope to publish our books one day so that others can understand our experiences in a greater depth than can be achieved in a short video. How can people support our work? Please subscribe to our Autistic Selves YouTube channel and follow us on our other social media sites. We also have a designated fundraising page where people can make small donations to us via PayPal or Stripe. Thank you for watching our video about who we are and why we set up our Autistic Sales YouTube channel. We hope you found it interesting and will go on to watch our other videos. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, please post them below and we will do our best to answer them. Thank you for your support from Naomi, Fiona and everyone at Autistic Selves.